let's be honest. Most of us have seen Roman numerals before. They're on clocks, book chapters, movie sequels, and even big sporting events. Yet when you look at them straight on, they don't feel like numbers. They feel like a code waiting to be cracked. Today, we're not just decoding them, we're mastering them. Right here on History of Simple Things. Roman numerals are a numbering system that stretches back over 2,000 years to the Roman Empire. Instead of the digits we use today, one, two, three, the Romans used letters from their alphabet to represent values. That's why you see letters like I, V, X, and C as numbers. It's not a typo. It's history etched into symbols. In modern use, there are seven core symbols you need to know. I stands for 1, V is 5, X is 10, L is 50, C is 100, D is 500, and M is 1000. You stack and combine them to make every larger number you need. So the first step to reading Roman numerals is just this. Recognize the letters and their values, like you'd learn the basic vocabulary of a language. Roman numerals aren't random. They follow consistent patterns. Once you understand the patterns, you'll see they're engineered for clarity, not mystery. Rule 1. Add the values when symbols go from big to small. If a symbol comes after one equal or larger than it, you add, for example, VII means 5 plus 1 plus 1 equals 7. LXXX means 50 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 80. MCCC means 1000 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 equals 1300. Pretty straightforward. Each symbol contributes its full value when it's bigger or equal to what comes after. Rule 2. Subtract when a smaller symbol comes first. This is where the system seems weird, but it actually makes things shorter and less confusing. If a smaller value comes before a larger one, you subtract the smaller. IV is 5 minus 1 equals 4. I, X is 10 minus 1 equals 9. XL is 50 minus 10 equals 40. XC is 100 minus 10 equals 90. CM is 1000 minus 100 equals 900. See how 4 isn't written as I, 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 I. The subtractive rule makes it much cleaner, I, V. Rule 3. Limits on repetition. Not every numeral can repeat endlessly. I, X, C, and M can appear up to three times in a row. That's why I, I, I is 3 and X, X, X is 30. But V, L, and D are never repeated. You won't see V, V for 10 since there's already X, and you won't see L, L for 100. Rule 4. Subtraction has boundaries. It's not every symbol that can subtract from another. I can only subtract from V and X. X can subtract from L and C, and C can subtract from D and M. V, L, and D are never subtractive. Once you've internalized these rules, you'll see Roman numerals are less of an odd relic and more of a clever notation system. Here's how to actually read a Roman numeral when you see one. Start from the left. Roman numerals are read from left to right. Identify the largest values first, because Romans wrote big values first. You usually add as you go. Check for subtraction patterns. If a smaller numeral appears before a larger one, subtract the smaller from the larger and then continue. Let's walk through a few. X, I, V. Start with X or 10. Next is I before V. Subtract 1 from 5 equals 4. So 10 plus 4 equals 14. L, I, X, L is 50. I before X means 10 minus 1 equals 9. So 50 plus 9 equals 59. 
MCMXC. M equals 1000. Next CM is 1000 minus 100 equals 900. Then XC is 100 minus 10 equals 90. So total 1000 plus 900 plus 90 equals 1990. Do this enough and reading them becomes second nature. Here's something that trips a lot of people up. Roman numerals have no symbol for zero. The Romans never developed a concept of zero the way we think of it in math today. That's one reason why this system feels weird to us. Zero is baked into everything we do now. Roman numerals didn't just vanish with the fall of the empire. They hung on for centuries through cathedrals, universities, and legal documents. Even today you find them on clock faces, in book chapter headings, in movie sequels like Rocky II, and big events like the Super Bowl. They're a cultural fossil, not functional for big arithmetic, but deeply embedded in tradition. Let's test what you just learned with a simple mini quiz. Convert these Roman numerals to standard numbers, X, I, X, C, X, L, I, V, and D, C, C, L, X, X, V, I, I. Now, convert these numbers to Roman numerals, 22, 99, and 501. Pause this video if you need to. We'll give you a moment. Got them? Here are the answers. X, I, X equals 10 plus 10 minus one equals 19. C, X, L, I, V equals 100 plus 50 minus 10 plus 5 minus 1 equals 144. D, C, C, L, X, X, V, I, I equals 500 plus 100 plus 100 plus 50 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1 plus 1 equals 777. Now back the other way. 22 equals X, X, I, I. 99 equals X, C, I, X. And 501 equals D, I. If some of these felt awkward, go back and check how subtraction works. That's the trickiest part for most people. Roman numerals are more than dusty artifacts. They're reminders of how human systems evolve. They show economy, logic, and even design thinking long before digital displays and the decimal system math were mainstream. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.